See, that's just a resource. Praise the Lord. Because even when that dries up, the source is always still there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So you can get another resource, but you can't get another source. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So your resources may dry up one day, but your source never will dry up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. See, so your circumstances can talk to your resources. Praise the Lord. But they can't talk to your source. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the source will tell your circumstances, be here. Praise the Lord. Sit down. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Woo. My, 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 my. Happy Resurrection Day in the name of Jesus. We praise God for Jesus. Resurrection 2024, I tell you. Praise the Lord. We get excited all the time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We hey, every Sunday is a resurrection Amen. Sunday. Praise Amen. God. Really, every day is it because Jesus lives every day. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We just sit aside, you know, to let the world know. Now we already know. We let the world know that Jesus is alive today. Amen. Praise Lord. In case they forgot, we let them know. Jesus is still alive. He hasn't changed. God is still on the throne. Yeah, Prayer is still changing things and changing people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Grace is still abounding. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Victory is still won in the name of Jesus. Amen. People are still getting saved, healed, delivered, and set free. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Miracles are still taking place. Why? Because he's alive today. Yeah. huh? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So again, we say welcome, welcome to each one of you and now to our Facebook family and to all of our social media family. We say welcome, welcome. House of Faith Christian Center 2024 Resurrection Day. And we are just so excited to be what God is doing here at House of Faith Christian Center and what God can do in your life as well. And so thank you again for tuning in for this broadcast. And truly, one word from God would change your life forever. And uh, we're just so excited about Jesus. And so people say, why are you happy? I said, because Jesus is alive. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just believing when someone's alive, praise the Lord. You ought to be happy. Praise the Lord. Lord and God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so we're happy in Jesus. Hallelujah. So listen, friend, go ahead and hit like and hit share, and like and hit share, and go ahead and call friends, family members, co workers, uh, people you work with. But praise the Lord. Uh, let them know House of Faith Christian Center. We're live on the air contact. For all your family members contact mama them, daddy them, baby brother them, baby sister them, Chiquita them, and the glory to God, baby brother, all them. Let them know House of Faith Christian Center is on the air. We'll praise God for 
the day and all God is just doing in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So uh, we are out in time. This is also Resurrection Day. We're going to take Holy Communion. And so you want to go ahead and get your uh, uh, bread and get your juice. Get ready for that as well. And then also you want to make sure you get your Bibles and praise the Lord and get a pen and paper for prepare to take some coaches notes. It is going to be so hot awesome today. I mean, glory to God. Jesus, that praise of worship. Woo, my goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It was just awesome. Amen. We thank God for uh, our praise and worship leaders. They just inspire us and take us to a higher life in Jesus. Hallelujah. So we praise God uh, for that. So we're going to get right into his words. It's going to be so good. We've got a lot of great things going on uh, today. A lot busy day and praise the Lord. But it's Jesus day. It's all about Jesus. Huh? Look, somebody say it's all about Jesus. It's so, all about it's Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus, and we're so excited about that. So we're going to go ahead and get right into the Word of God. And so again, uh, we want you to go ahead and get your Bibles out, whether you have it on printed text, whether you have it on your iPod, your iPad, uh, uh, whatever it is, praise the Lord, and uh, it's going to be so good. So let's get right into the Word of God, and God, I like great things in store for you in Jesus' name. So if you would go ahead and open your Bibles up, and let's make this confession of faith. And uh, again, happy Resurrection Day 2024. If I have not said that already, I'll say it again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say these words. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. I am now ready. Ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready, ready. To receive the dynamic, the powerful, the ever increasing, the ever increasing, the life changing, the life changing word of God. Word of God. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. I boldly confess. I boldly confess. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I boldly boldly. Confess. I boldly boldly confess. I'll never never be the same. I'll never never be the same. I boldly 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 confess. I boldly 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 confess. After hearing God's word today. After hearing God's word today. I'll never 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 be the same. I will never 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 be the same. For thy kingdom. For thy kingdom. For thy kingdom. For thy kingdom. For thy power. For thy power. For thy power. For thy power. For thy glory. For thy glory. And thy glory. And thy glory. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. For this is my receiving day. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We celebrate Jesus on this day of resurrection. Praise the Lord. And uh, as already stated, we're just so glad to have the mighty woman of God back in our presence. I would call it a miracle. Uh, uh, Minister Marilyn Brown, praise the Lord. God has brought her. Uh, it's been about four months and about 10 days. Praise the Lord since she had, you know, I just call it a little bump in the road. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. A little bump. And uh, you're going to be hearing from her in a few weeks. And, and uh, you want to go ahead and get ready to try to tell people come. If they're looking for a miracle, they want to come and hear a miracle in a few weeks. And it's going to be blessed. Say, Why is that? I think because Jesus is alive. Because Jesus is alive. So listen, hey, uh, let's go right, right into this word of God. Uh, this year, God. And, oh, and by the way, have, have I said happy resurrection day yet? Have I, I, I said it. Okay. In case I didn't say it, happy resurrection day again. All right. Now, uh, this year, God's grace for an open door 2024. We've been on it, and it's been so awesome that God's going to take us to higher heights uh, in, in, in the Lord. And so, uh, in our Bibles, in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8, in the New Living Translation, uh, this is what it says It says, I know all the things you do. And I have opened a door for you that no one can close. He says, listen, you have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. So again, we have an open door in 2024. Say this, I have. I have. An open door. I opened open door. In 2024. In 2024. Lord, God, we've been seeing it. God, God, the door has just been opening and opening and opening and it's pretty present. So uh, today on Resurrection Day uh, 2024, again, I want to pick up uh, where we left off a few weeks ago entitled Jesus is the Door, uh, part three. Jesus is the door. It's based on John chapter 10 and verses 1 to verse 9. Now let's go ahead and put that up right now and put that on the screen. All right. John chapter 10, verse 1 to verse 9. And uh, it says, this, this, is, this is Jesus talking. And uh, let me just go ahead and give you the background of this. And really to get an understanding of chapter 10, you've got to go back and read chapter 9. And chapter 9 uh, tells a situation where there was a blind man. Uh, who had been blind from his mother's birth. And the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, 
uh, who, who did sin? Did this man sin or did his parents sin? Because then uh, that if a person born blind, it was assumed that someone had sinned. And Jesus says that no, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He says, but the works of God may be made manifest in them. You know, and the Bible says that the man came to Jesus, you know, and Jesus uh, took some uh, Holy Ghost saliva, <laughs> all right, and he spit on the ground and made a little spittle and, and he made a clay. And the Bible says he put it on the man's eyes and he told him, he said, now you go down to the pool of Siloam and I want you to wash. And the man did exactly what Jesus said to do. He went down to the pool, someone led him and washed. And the Bible says he came back seeing. You know, he was a blind man, and the people were just amazed because, you know, they knew that this guy had been blind, you know, from his birth. And now a miracle had taken place, he began to see, you know, and then some people began to question and said, well, is it really him? You know, and say, well, it looked like him, and they said, no, it's really him. And so the religious leader got involved, and so saw the commotion going on, they said, you know, he was a blind man, you know, that he's now he's able to see, you know. And so then they wanted to find out, okay, it was a Sabbath day, like, okay, who made you see on a Sabbath day, you know? And uh, and the man said, I don't know. He said, this man told me that, listen, when to do it, I can be seen. You know? And so again, they began to question him whether he was really blind. And then they called his parents in and got them involved in. And, and uh, they just simply said, this is our son. Yes, he was born blind. But as you can see right now, he can't see, praise the Lord, you know? And so then the, uh, I found out that uh, they said, now, who was it that made you? And the guy finally said, well, I think this guy by the name of Jesus. You know, oh boy, when he said that, they really got upset. What? This man must be a sinner. How can everybody yell on the Sabbath? They said, listen, man, listen, come on now. Don't get caught up in the day. I was blind, but now I see. All right? And so apparently you know, they end up and they, they kicked him out of church, you know, and said, oh, no, he, he get there. you know, Jesus found him. He said, do you believe you're the son, that I'm the son of God? And, and the guy said, who is the son of God? He said, the one you're talking to. He said, yes, I believe. Well, then the Pharisees came, came, got involved in it. They said, wait just a minute now. He says, now, are we blind? You know? And Jesus taught them something and says is, you've got the blindness of unbelief. Whenever you listen to me now, whenever you walk in unbelief, when you don't believe what Jesus says, when you don't believe what Jesus did, do you don't believe what Jesus commanded, when you don't believe what Jesus promised, 100% you are blind, you know? And Jesus told him, yeah, you're blind. So that was the introduction. And now, so Jesus uses it as a teaching thing. He said, you know what? I'm not gonna let you this lady get off so quick. I, I gotta teach you something about who I am. And so now we get introduced into chapter 10, John chapter 10. So he's Jesus, he's still talking. He says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climb some other way elsewhere from other quarter is a thief and a robber. Now he's really talking about the Pharisees. You know, because again, they tried to uh, take the people and mislead the people. They were not true shepherds. So therefore, Jesus refers to them as thieves. Verse two says, but he who enters by the door, if I say the door, the door. notice is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the door, if I say the door. He says, for this man, uh, and, and the sheep listen to his voice, and he did, and he calls his own sheep by name, and brings them out. Verse 4. When he has brought his own sheep outside, he walks on before them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Verse 5. He says, They will never on any account follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of strangers or recognize their call. Verse 6. Jesus uses parable, illustration, with them, see, with, with the Pharisees. But they did not understand what he was talking about. Verse 7. So Jesus says again, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you that I myself am the door. If I say the door. The door. This is for the sheep. All others who came such before me are thieves and robbers. But the true sheep did not listen to and obey them. The verse 9 says, listen, I am the door, if I say the door. Oh, wow. And anyone who enters into me will be saved. 
will live, will come in, and he will go out freely and will find pasture. So Jesus is the door. Somebody say Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. So let's pick up where we left off on last time, just give you a, a quick review of part one and part two. We're going to hit this and then we'll get into our things we want to share with you because again, we're talking about God's grace, God's unmerited favor. God's operational power working on your behalf this year as an open door. There may be some doors that have been closed to you. There may be some doors that have been shut. There may be some doors that you see that no one be open. But when you understand the role of Jesus, see, I am the door. I am is a figure he used to, the, to, the, to say that I am Yahweh. I am the one who have always been. I'm the one who spoke to Moses back in Exodus chapter 3. that says, I am that I am. Whatever you need me to be, I am. So in this case, if you got a closed door, listen, I am your door. Praise the Lord. So let's look at review right quick. This is what we said. Just as doors are necessary in our lives, because again, we came here through a door. I want you to think about how many doors you experience today. This, you woke up this morning, all right? And uh, maybe you went outside your bedroom door. And uh, then uh, maybe you went to the restroom door of your house. And then, you know, you went to the kitchen and you opened up the door of the refrigerator. You opened the door of the oven. You opened the door of the microwave. You opened the door of the cabinet that you went in, you know. And then you maybe went through another door. And then you came out the door of your house. And maybe you had a garage. You had to open up the door to the garage. And then you had to get into the door of your car. And then you got out of your car, you came downstairs to the door outside, and then you came out, and then you came through the door here. So again, all doors are necessary. And think about the doors. What would happen in your life if you just didn't have a door? You'd be stuck, you'd be stagnated, you'd be immobilized, you couldn't move, so doors are necessary. So Jesus says, I am the door, which means, listen, just as doors are necessary for your daily living, Jesus says, I am the door, and if you want to come to the Father, you got to come to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So again, people cannot get to the Father unless they go through Jesus, who is the door. Say this, Jesus is the door. Jesus, Jesus is the door. door. Now, people say, well, you know what? What if I get water baptized? That's good. What if I observe the, observe the Lord's Supper? That's good. You know, what, what if I just come to church? That's good. What, what, what if I try to be a good person? That's good. What, what, what if I just do a lot of good things? You know, that's good. And my friends, listen, all of these things, maybe I just come from a religious background. All right? My family, which grew up in church, and they were very spirit, they were religious. And that's good. Thank God for those things. But listen, my friends, I want to tell you, my friends, listen here, that these things are not the door. They're good, but only Jesus is the door. He didn't say your baptism is the door. He didn't say your Lord's Supper is the door. He didn't say that going to church is the door. He didn't say trying to be a good person is the door. He didn't say doing good works is the door. He didn't say religious family is the door. No, Jesus has to be the door. What does that mean? He's the door, which means what Jesus said, what Jesus taught, what Jesus commanded, what Jesus promised, listen, what Jesus uh, said to us, that is the door. And unless we go through one of those areas, my friends, we will never really experience the benefits of the door. Someone say amen. Amen. Glory to God. So listen, only Jesus is the door. And when we possess him, we possess this eternal, everlasting life. Now, we also stated that there are four blessings we receive when we enter through Jesus as the door. Look at verse 9 again. Jesus says, I am the door. And he says, notice, anyone who enters through me. All right? So he's the door, but you got to enter in. That means 
Your part is that you got to make a move. That means that, listen, you got to be progressive to go through Jesus. You just can't say, well, yeah, 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 I just leave it. No, no, no. You've got to be very active to say, okay, Jesus, you're the door. And guess what? I have to enter through you as the door. So that's number one. Secondly, what happened is when you do that, he says, you will be saved. In other words, you will live. You understand what life is all about when you say, Jesus, you are my door. You just want to exist. You just want to just go through school and have a family and get a job and get a career and do it. No, no, no. You really start living the life, the God life that is inside of you because you'll start understanding you have a purpose. Look at somebody say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. But until you go to Jesus' door, you don't know what that purpose is. And so I've got to say, Jesus, you're the door, so therefore allow me to start living. And some people start living earlier than others. Some start living children. Some start living teenage. Some start living young adults. Some start living middle age, you know, and some start living season. But why is that? Because again, they have not never made Jesus the door. Hallelujah. And so when you do it, you'll be saved. Listen, you'll be delivered. You'll be set free when you realize he is the only one who is the door. Thank God for programs. Thank God for uh, other things that they do. But only Jesus can be your door. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And people say, well, I can't find out. I say, because you ain't found Jesus your door yet. You're trying everything else. And it just not work. Praise the Lord. So you will be saved through Jesus as you do it. But not only are you saved, he says the third thing is going to happen is, he says when Jesus is your door, he says you'll go in. What is it? That means that you'll start going in to realize that Jesus, I've got to recognize you. Jesus, I go into your presence. Jesus, I go and spend some time with you. See, see I, when, when I use the door, see, I want to get in with him. I'll go in to be with him. Because he has the goods. And then next of all, he says, listen. He said, no, I go in, I'll, I'll go out. What? I, when I go out, I'll go out recognizing that he is my door. I will never be effective. I will never listen to me now. I will never be successful. I will never be what he wants me until when I go out, I represent him. I don't represent myself. Because again, when you go out and people see you, how many you know that sometimes they're not a good picture picture. But you got to spend some time with him in so you can go out. Hallelujah. Good. Jesus said, come in. Guess what? And then you go out. And this is one of the things that we do here at House of Faith. Listen, we come in, praise the Lord. Listen, we get the word of God. We get built up. We get trained. We get developed. And guess what? Then we go out. Right. And then listen, we make a difference in people's lives. Why? Because listen, Jesus is our door. Jesus is the only one who saved us. Jesus has come in to me. And now when you come in to me and spend time with me, now you're able to go out. Hallelujah. But some people say, well, I, I'm not a good pitcher when I go out. I say, you ain't stayed in long enough. <laughs> <laughs> come on in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this is what I love about worship service church. We come in, praise the Lord. We get what we need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, we get washed up. Ah, come on now. Listen, you know, we get bandaged up. Praise the Lord. We get mended up. Hallelujah. And then guess what? Then we go out, praise the Lord, to make a difference. We come in to worship, but we go out to serve. You hear what I'm saying? We come in to Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. Why? Now we can go out and now we can serve others. And then the final thing he says, guess what? Number four, he says, guess what? You will find pastors, or guess what? You will start living the abundant life. Hallelujah. Listen, saints, Jesus did not come for you to struggle every day of your life. Now, you may have some struggles, but Jesus wants to get you out of your struggles and get you a point where you are experiencing the abundant life every day of your life. Will you have challenges? Yes. Will you have disappointments? Yes. Will things happen? But you say, listen, those things are not going to deter me. Those things are not going to put me back. Praise the Lord. I'm going to live the abundant life. I don't care what I experience. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I feel. I don't care what people think about me. Listen, Jesus is my door, so I'm not going to disappoint him. I'm going to live the abundant life. 
And you need to put all the demons in hell on notice and say, you know what? This is one person that I'm going to live the abundant life. Why? Because Jesus is my door. Amen. Hallelujah! And I am not going to have a pity party. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, all of that was reviewed. <laughs> so let's get into part three. Today's message, Jesus is the door of the sheep. So listen, we've talked about the setting that we have. Now, uh, in John chapter 10, Jesus started teaching. Let, let, let's go back to verse 1. Uh, and, and again, he's teaching this Pharisee, these Pharisees uh, some things about, you know, that, 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 that he is the door of the sheep. And so we got a lot of things going on. We 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 got the sheep, and 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 who are the sheep? The, 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 the sheep are the ones who Jesus has come to give his life for. Those are the sheep, and a sheep by himself or by herself can never make it. The total listen. The total welfare of the sheep depends upon the sheep relationship with the shepherd. And so uh, back in uh, 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 the days of Jesus, they, they had uh, what they called the sheepfold. And in the sheepfold, there are two types of sheepfold that they experienced. One is called the communal type of sheepfold. And this was actually uh, a type of inside a pen building uh, that the shepherd uh, would take the sheep at the end of the day. And he would get the sheep and they would go inside this building uh, and uh, there the sheep would be like a stable life. And then there was a gatekeeper there who was a type of under shepherd. And he had the responsibility of seeing over the sheep while the shepherd was away. And so again, he was called some places, they call him a porter, some call him a hireling, some call him under shepherd. And, and so he had the responsibility of taking care of the sheep while the shepherd away. But when the shepherd came back using the morning time, then uh, the, the, the caregiver would not talk to anyone else except the shepherd. Why? Because he was in charge of taking care of the sheep. And so when he recognized the shepherd, the shepherd could come in, all right? And then the Bible says that, listen, the, sh the, the shepherd began to call the sheep by name. You know, he, you know, he, he, he knew all the sheep by name. He, he, he gave them names. I don't know what to call them, you know. And, you know, he may say, you know, you know, Fred, bad, you know, Lucy, bad, you know, uh, uh, Theodore, bad, you know, you know, Simon, bad, Alvin, Alvin, Carol. Oh, man, yeah, whatever. Okay. So he had, he had all names for him. And guess what? The sheep recognized who the shepherd was based on his voice. They wouldn't listen to anyone else. All right? So that was a type of communion uh, that they had in Winnipeg. But then there was another type of uh, way how the shepherd deals with the sheep. And the shepherd would take the sheep out in, in the pasture in the daytime. But then at nighttime, they actually spend the night outside. And, and so they were responsible, the shepherd was responsible for having all the sheep together. And uh, uh, he was there to do two things. Number one, to protect the sheep. And secondly, to feed the sheep. Protect, guard the sheep. Why? Because there was wild animals. There was uh, bears and cougars, you know, and wolves and, and coyotes, and their job was to devour the sheep. So the shepherd had to get all the sheep together in a fold. And at nighttime, sometimes when the shepherd would, 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 would get tired, sometimes the shepherd would actually lie down. And, and the sheep, listen, he knew exactly how many sheep he had. If one left, many times he would leave the 99 and go find that one sheep. However, the sheep listen, could not actually come out unless they went over the shepherd. So that shepherd, listen to me now, the shepherd was a type of door. That shepherd was a type of gate that the sheep, listen, had to pass over to even get through. So when Jesus says, listen, I am 
the door. Listen, I'm here for two reasons. I'm here, number one, to protect you, to guard you, and to watch your welfare, and also to feed you and to give you the abundant life. That's the job of the shepherd. So when Jesus says, listen, I am the door, you think about a door. I thought about a door one time. This is what came up. A door really means nothing to me unless I use it. See, you can have a door and I can just look at the door and I can say, you know what? I really need to go out that door. You know? And the door won't say anything at all. Well, it'd be nice if I could go outside that door. It won't be anything off. So listen, it's not, listen to me now, it's not the duty of the door to open for me. It's the open, it's duty of me to open that door. Okay? You ever got up in the morning time, you know, and the door said to you, good morning. Would you like to come out today? Did you lock me last night? No, the door don't talk to you at all. But the door is there for your benefit. And Jesus is there for our benefit. And we have a benefit to do two things. Number one, to open the door. And secondly, to close the door and to lock behind the door. All right? You know, my wife, she she, she, she gets all the time, you know, because I'll be up sometime watching TV what it is, you know. And uh, I, I, I just get in the bed, you know, and I'll go in and she said, Ronnie, did you lock all the doors? I like that. Okay, and I, and all right, you know, and then, you know, I go back and I make sure all the doors are locked, you know, that they have that secure, whatever, you know, because again, the doors have two functions. That is to be closed and locked and to be open. That's it. And so when Jesus uses metaphor, listen to me now, when Jesus uses metaphor that I am the door, his purpose is I want to close some things and lock some things and I want to open up some things. And I want you to focus on this for the rest of this message. Jesus, you are my door. Say this, Jesus, you are my door. Jesus, you are my door. So Jesus says, listen, when you allow me to be your door, there are some things I want to close up and there's some things I want to open up for you. Hallelujah. And so today, I want you to think about is, first of all, Jesus wants to close up. I want you to think, what are some things in your life today that Jesus needs to close? Now, don't be looking at somebody, all right? I ain't talking, no. <laughs> no, don't be, don't be hitting somebody with your, ouch! No, 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 no. I want you to think about yourself. Okay, Lord, there are some things in my life, Jesus, you need to close. What did someone say? When Jesus closed the door, it is, listen, your life, before he closed the door, many times it may be dominated by sin. That's the door need to be shut. It's a life dominated by guilt. That door needs to be shut. A life dominated by pain. That door needs to be shut. A life dominated by loss. Hmm. Maybe it's the door of your past. That, that door needs to be closed. Because what happens is when you continue to bring up your past about things you've done, things you could have, should have, would have done, whatever, you know, mistakes that made you made, whatever. And that door, you never shut that door, my friends. And now it is bothering you. It is haunting you. It is keeping you from progressing uh, with God. We know why. Because you have not allowed Jesus to close that door in your life. Praise the Lord. Yeah, y'all yeah, quiet so y'all listen to this. I got it. Praise the Lord. Just think about it. You know, why are you going through those same emotions all the time? Because you're not allowed Jesus to close that door. And then, listen, some of you need, maybe need to close some doors for some people. Let me get some water right here. <laughs> Why is that? Because you're doing okay. But when that same people, that same little group come around, and you have to close that door, and you think you're having a good time, I'm talking to somebody here. And you really, after that, you feel worse. Why? Because you didn't close the door of that relationship. And you keep opening that door and you close it. 
You open that door, you close that door. You know, I, I like these old people, uh, older people, they sit around sometime and all, and they say, shut that door! <laughs> close that door! <laughs> I'm like, what problem? You know, like, yeah. Close that door. Why? Because unwanted things are coming in. You know? You know? Flies coming in. Shut the door. Mosquitoes come in. Shut the door. All right? Why is that? That door needs to be shut. And I want to tell you, my friends, sometimes you won't be able to go think for God until you make the decision and says, Jesus, I need for you to help me shut that door. I mean, sister, I mean, I had to shut the door some people, you know. In, 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 in my early age, I, I, I did. I had to shut the door because they didn't do me any good. I mean, you know, they, they went about anything. You know, you know, I just want to have a good time. Okay, well, what about after the good time? I don't know, you know. And today, some of them still live with mama. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Still doing the same thing, still on the same corner, still talking the same job, you know. And, 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 and you want to go around, you know, I'm not saying dismiss it, but I'm simply saying, Fellowship with them, that door needs to be shut. And you gotta let it go. Your pain, your hurt, your frustration, you gotta let it go. Because what? Jesus is the door. Somebody say Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. Now, listen to me now. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, listen to me now. I didn't I believe no, no, the devil believes in Jesus. See, see, Reverend, listen. Resurrection is not just believing Jesus got up. Resurrection is believing that Jesus got up for me and now he wants to change my life. You hear what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, you know, oh, well, Jesus got Okay, but what does that mean to you? All right? So Jesus, listen, when he got up, he's, listen, he's the door. So that simply means that, listen, he wants to be Lord and Savior. Everybody say Lord and Savior. Lord, Lord and Savior. Savior. See, no, I didn't say just Savior, fire insurance. Because there are people say, oh, yeah, I want Jesus to save me. All right? Because I don't want to burn. And so Jesus, it's okay to be my Savior. But Jesus don't want, just want to listen to me now. When he's the door, he's not just your Savior. He's your Lord. Yeah. Now, what does that simply mean? That means now I talk to him and I ask him how to handle situations. I realize that my life is not my own. Right. Oh, my. Psalm says, my life is not my own. To him, I belong. I give myself to, to him. See, so now, Jesus, I need for you to lord me in every area of my life. Right. See, even lord me for some doors that I'm refusing to shut. I need you to lord me in those areas. And you know that I try to close those doors, and I, I, I try to act like I'm going to close them, but then I, you know, I get scared and I open back up. So I try to close that door of pain. I try to close But they want, Jesus, I need you to lord me so that door be closed forever. Y'all hear what I'm saying now? And now he's lording me in that particular area. So listen to him now. Number one, first thing I do, I accept him as the Lord and Savior. And, 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 and so the first thing, he forgives me of my sin. That's number one. Now, when he, what does it mean he forgives me of my sins? I, I, that's why I love to teach the word of God. Man is for, listen, man is born into sin. See, we, 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 we're not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. We have that sin nature. And we're trying to get to a holy God. But that sin, listen, is, is, is interfering for us in getting to God. And so we got God who is holy on one side. And we got man who is sinful on the other side. And we've tried to do everything we, we can the church, I get the Holy God. Well, if I try to be a good person uh, and, and do good things, I get the Holy God. Well, my religion, I get God. And none of those things would get us to God at all. And so there comes a separation between a unholy, unrighteous sinner and a holy God. All right? And so what happens is Jesus comes and he says, now I got to bring a holy God and a unrighteous sinner together. So therefore, I will be the bridge to bring them. So to do that, I've got to have you as a sinner to be forgiven of your sins. Because that's the only way you as a sinner can get to a holy God. All right? All right? And so, listen, I have to 
Forgiveness has to come. But here's the thing about it is, forgiveness always has a price. See, in uh, Hebrews 9.22, it says, For where there is no shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So God requires that now, Jesus, if you're going to forgive this unrighteous man, some blood has to be shed. Because I can only recognize the blood. Why? Because there's life in the blood. So when you give your blood, you're giving your life. And now when you give your life, now I can see the forgiveness of this unrighteous man. And now this unrighteous man can become one with a holy God. Why? Based on not what the unrighteous man, but did what Jesus did who shed his blood. And so now I am forgiven of my sins based on the blood of Jesus. Not based on anything I did, not based on my religion, not based on me coming to church, not based on me taking Holy Communion, not based on me being baptized, not based on me trying to be a good person. That won't do it. See, that's all about me. But it's not about me. It's about him, praise the Lord, who brings me to him. And that's the forgiveness of sin. And so that's the first step. So I say, Jesus, if you're going to close the door, I've got to be forgiven of everything I've done. But I'm forgiven and based on not what I've done, based on what you've done for me. That's, that's not good news. Oh, that's good news. And so what happens is, so he closes the door based on that. But listen, here's the thing about it is. You see, Jesus didn't come just for you to be just to be saved. Listen to me now. He came also for you to have the power to overcome the guilt, the fear, the pain, the loss in your daily life. Now, so the first step is you gotta know Jesus died for your sins. All right? Let's go to uh, Romans 5, verse 8. Romans 5, verse 8. These are basic teachings. Again, when Jesus is your door. Again, he is not your religion. He has to be your door. He is not your baptism. He has to be your door. He is not you taking the Lord's Supper. He has to be your door. He is not you trying to be a good person and do good works. He has to be your door. Hallelujah. He says, but God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Okay? See, this, when you talk to people, well, pastor, preacher, when I get myself together, you won't. Because, see, if you, because based on you getting yourself together, why would Jesus have to come? Right. Think about it. Jesus, oh, they get themselves together, they don't need me. No! So God's love realized you couldn't get yourself together, you couldn't get it right, you couldn't cross all your T's and dot all your I's, you couldn't do it yourself, but so God, my confidence is not so much in what I do, my confidence in you who love me when I was still in my mess. When I still couldn't get my act together. You know, see people got this false notion, I don't know where they get it from, that you know what, I gotta be, I gotta be perfect before I come to church, okay? Now, if that was the case, our doors would stay closed all the time. <laughs> Nobody, including me, would be able to get in. The church is not for perfect people. The church is for people who are seeking forgiveness. And we're like, God sent his love for us when we were not able to do things for ourselves. He loved us, the Messiah. He died for us. I love the old song we sung in the Baptist church. It says this. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deep, this stain within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now saved am I. Come on. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. 
something else could help. Love lifted me. Don't you ever think you pulled yourself up by your bootstrap. Don't you ever think you was all this and all that. Don't you ever think you had yourself together. No, it was God's love that saw you in that condition and said, you know what? I'm going to reach out and pull you up. And my confidence is not in my abilities. My confidence is in this love. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, you ain't right. I, all right. But I know one thing about it. I know he loves me. <laughs> but Pastor, you shouldn't say it that you shouldn't say it. I know that. But guess what? One thing I do know, he still loves me. Yeah, Hallelujah. Look, look at the Bible say he still loves you. Yeah. He loves you. Even in the midst of your mess, even you didn't get yourself together, God's love is the one who pulled you out. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So therefore, because of his love, all of that. Now, so I, because it's love, see, I can say I'm delivered from fear. Fear. I'm delivered from guilt. I'm delivered from pain. I'm delivered from embarrassment. I'm delivered from all those things. You know I, why? Because of His God's love. Hallelujah, glory to God. Did you know when you realize that God's love is so important and all? Listen, you won't walk around being embarrassed because embarrassment is nothing but fear. See, so you didn't get the point. Listen, that you don't care a rip what folks think about you. Hello, somebody. One thing you do know, God loves me. And when you know God loves me, praise the Lord. I don't care what you think about me. Yeah. Hallelujah, huh? Glory to God. Yeah. Well, Pastor, yeah. you got a big nose and big lips. Yeah, but God still loves me. He loves my big lips and loves my big nose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I ain't got complaints from Pastor Terry yet. Praise the Lord. Praise now, she may talk about other things. She'll talk about my big lips praise and my big nose. <laughs> but you know God loves me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Roman. Now, now here's the other thing. Not only do you know that God, Jesus died for our sins, but also, listen, I want you to know that Jesus died in order that you could avoid keep on sinning. Huh? Because I talk to people all the time. Well, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm saying now, but you know, I can do what I want to do. You, you miss something. Here. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15, verse 34. But all those folks who think that because they're saved, they need to do what they want to do, keep on sinning. Verse 34 says, this is from the, uh, I think this the New Living Translation, I believe. Uh, it says, listen, think carefully about what is right. Now, before you do it, just think about it. You know, I deal with, I, I, I deal with you know, high school students all the time in, in school suspension. And, and this is what I, I would tell. I said, let me ask you something here. I said, no, don't answer yet. I want you to think about this. You know, yeah, so you ready for it? Yeah. I said, let me ask you something. I said, now, if you knew that you was going to get caught, would you still did? But you did wrong. And they looked for me. I said, don't answer. If you know exactly that what you're going to do wrong, what you did wrong, because you know you did was wrong. If you knew you were going to get caught, would you still did it? And one of them said, all of them said, no, no, I didn't. I said, so you knew the right thing to do, didn't you? I said, so the scripture says, think carefully of what is right. Well, 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 Pastor, how can I do it? Just ask Jesus. Jesus, could you please help me so I can always think what to do is right? Pastor, that sounds too easy. It's right? You are trapped sometimes. Jesus, I need you to help me so I can think to do what's right all the time. I can, yeah, I do it all the time. Guess what? You don't hear about a secret. It works. Because I want to please Jesus. How many want to please Jesus? So just ask him. Jesus think what's doing right. 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 So Jesus, because you're going to help me to think about what is the right, Jesus, now I need you to help me to stop sinning. Why is that? Because he's the door. And the door can help you stop sinning. Well, I can't stop sinning. Why? Y'all know why? Because you ain't asked him to. Y'all don't look at me like that way. When you ask Jesus to help you stop sinning, he will help you. I don't care what it is. But if you never ask him, well, you see, I can stop when I want to. You lying. Because you did, you would have stopped 10 years ago. But when you say Jesus, because you're the door, 
And because you died on the cross, I need you to help me stop sinning. Now, don't you be looking at somebody else now. He told you, no, I'm talking to you, all right? I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to myself as well. Why? Because he is the door. Say, Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. And he can help you stop sinning. Why? Because sin has stopped every fellowship you have. He says, for to your shame, I say that some of you don't know God at all. <gasps> what? I dare you, preacher. <laughs> tell me I don't know God. I didn't tell you that the word said that. What do you mean you don't know God? You don't know God can deliver you from everything you're going through. That's not you. I want you to think about one thing that God cannot help you stop sinning. Think about it. Is there anything that God can help you stop sinning? But you got to know God can do it. And so that's what I'm saying. You got to listen. When he's your door, you got to say, God, I need you to help me stop sinning so I can know you better. Because watch this. The more you begin to know God more, the more you begin to sin less. I'm gonna let the thing about. I I just can't stop sinning. I, I mean, I, I I try to stop, you know, speaking to him out, speaking out, out but every time I say, you know, it's just the way I am. No, you're lying. <laughs> you did it because you want to. Let me get some water right here. Nobody put a gun and made you cuss him out. No. You did it because you want to. Because you failed to say, Jesus, I need you to do it to help me stop sinning and do what's right. We're gonna make this confession. Say this. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I need you. I need, need for you, you to help me. To help me. To think. To think carefully. Carefully. But about, about what is right. What is right. All the time. All the time. And to stop sinning. And to stop sinning. Because I want to know you better. Because I want to know you better. I guarantee you say that consistently over and over. You're gonna start seeing your life. Okay, so that's it. Now I gotta move on. All right, all right, y'all really excited about that. Okay, right. now, not only does Jesus wants to close the door, but also he wants to open some doors. Mm -hmm. Everybody like that, praise the Lord. And the first door he wants to open is the door you're spending more time with him. All right, look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. Oh my goodness, this is so good. When Jesus is your door. Uh, Jesus will close some doors, but also he wants to open the door. All right? What's this? He says, God is faithful. Everybody say, God is faithful. God is faithful. I mean, oh, God is faithful. All right? He's faithful all the time. He comes through all the time. Praise the Lord. I may not be faithful, but we serve a God who is faithful. Praise the Lord. When people say, You're not doing this, I say, Yeah, but the God I serve is faithful. Praise the Lord. Well, you're not perfect. I know I'm not perfect, but I serve the one who is perfect, and he's faithful all the time. He's a good father. All the time. Watch this. By whom you were called. Now listen, he's faithful, called you into what? Fellowship. To what? Fellowship. Fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So listen, he wants to open the door so you have a constant fellowship with him all the time. He said, how do I just talk to him? Jesus, I need your help. Jesus, listen, I want to please you today because I want to fellowship with you. See, how can you fellowship with somebody? That, that 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 you don't spend no time in. And you gotta realize, listen, when you listen to me now, when you're going through a difficult time, listen to my way, everybody just coming up. When you're going through a difficult time, you've got to realize that Jesus is in the boat with you. You remember those disciples? Mm -hmm. When they were on the ship? And, 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 and guess what? The water was coming in, and, 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 and it was filling up the water and so forth. And your Bible says that Jesus was fast asleep on a pillow. They had to wake Jesus up. But one thing they realized, that listen, although he was asleep, he was still in the boat. And you may think that Jesus is going to sleep on you. You may think that he's not a bell on you. But you got to realize that, listen, what I'm going through right now, Jesus is still in my boat. Praise the Lord. I want to fellowship with him. I want to talk to him. And when I need to, I say, Jesus, wake up. Fellowship with Jesus. Partnership with Jesus. I guess I want you to see this. This Christianity is not just coming to church and, and trying to do the best that you can. Listen, if that was all about, listen, I would still be a heathen. Huh? Yes, I would. Why? Because there's some preachers still heathen. 
They think Christianity is nothing about them just coming in the pulpit and preaching on Sundays, you know, and, and, and talking to people about Jesus, and they go and live in kind of lifestyle they want Monday through Saturday. That's not Christianity. Christianity is fellowship with Jesus every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's why I can have a sanctified Sunday, a marvelous Monday, a terrific Tuesday, a wonderful Wednesday, a thankful Thursday, a fantastic Friday, and a spectacular Saturday. Why? Because I fast with Jesus every day. And when you fast with Jesus, hey, every day is a good day. Amen. Amen. Well, let me tell you, he don't have bad days. Is it because I'm special? No. I mean, excuse me. How in the, excuse me, how in the, you know what, can I have a bad day when I'm fellowship with Jesus every day and he's in my boat? You have bad day when you don't fellowship with Jesus. And even stuff that you don't know how to take care of, you call on Jesus and say, Jesus, let me fellowship with you. And let me spend time with you. I don't know how to do this situation. I need your wisdom. I need your guidance. I, I, I need you to take me. I just don't know what to do. So Jesus, I want to hang out with you. I want to fellowship with you. I want you to be partners with you. And guess what? Why? Because, listen, when you do well, I do well. And I take you everywhere I go. Isn't that good? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, he's what going to say today. Don't you see it? Praise the Lord. Stand out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> We're part of the fellowship. And then the last one is this. Is this. When Jesus opened up the door of living, not only did he want you to have fellowship with him, <coughs> But also, he wants you to have loving service to people around you. I mean, this, this, this love to serve people. Pray. See, how can you, how can Jesus open up a door for you, you know, and for you to be mean and hate? Uh, I ain't talking about any of y'all, some of the people that don't just, I, 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 I ain't called no names now. Nah. You just called me. I ain't called you that. I'm just simply saying is that when Jesus opened up the door, he wants you to have a loving heart for people. Look at first, look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Last one we're going to close it out. Praise the Lord. Well, this is a powerful resurrection. You need to go over this over and over again when Jesus is your door. Say again, Jesus is my door. Jesus, Jesus is my door. All right. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, we close out. He said, Then so it's occasion of opportunity to open up the door. Let us do good. If I say do good, do good. Yeah. More than to all people, look at somebody saying, he's talking to you too. All right, all right. Thank you. Yeah, I said, all right, all right, all right. He's finding trouble, all right? Not only being useful or profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual good and advantage. Be mindful of your blessing, especially those of the household of faith, those who belong to God's family with you, the believers. God has called us to put an investment in people's lives. That's what we're here for. See, we are blessed to be a what? Blessing. Everything you have, God wants you to be a blessing to other people to do that. See, your life is not your own once you realize Jesus is your door. And now you say, Jesus, I want to serve you. So Jesus, let me be a blessing to people who are around me for their spiritual. Why? Because the devil wants to take advantage. God wants you to what? Have the advantage and to give people the advantage to live the spirit of your life. And to love people. Starting with your household. <laughs> Loving people. Ah, you don't know. No. Jesus is your door. See, Jesus opened up a door for you to grow. And sometimes Jesus, listen, will use people in your own household to grow up for you to be more like him. Ooh, y'all really got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> hey, you went from preaching to method now. You mean to tell me the reason why they acted things and so forth and all is because of them? No. It's because of your reaction. What you going to do about it? Are you going to allow Jesus to open up the door so you can grow in him? And then you can give loving service? Because, well, I just want to love people who love me back. Jesus said, what profit is that to you? Well, I just want to be kind to people who are kind to me. Jesus said, even the sinners do that. That's what he said. You're better than that. And so therefore, yeah, sometimes things happen in your family, your loved ones, and, and the people around you and on your job, in your business, so forth and all. And it's not so much them. It's for you to grow up and to be more like Jesus. And like, Jesus, I can't do this thing wrong, but you'll be my door. And therefore, I love people, but especially the household of faith.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Happy resurrection day, everybody stand up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus is my door. Jesus is my door. Jesus is my door. Hallelujah. He's my door. He knows how to close some things. And even when Satan came to him 2,000 years ago and said, Jesus, I'm going to close up some things for you. Listen, your life is over. Listen, you save people and you cannot save yourself. Come down for that cross. I'm going to close the door of your ministry. I'm going to close the door of your life. I'm going to close the door of your friends. I'm going to close everything and all. And Satan tried to close the door on Jesus. Praise the Lord. And he thought when he died on the cross, he thought that his door had been shut, but he didn't realize, glory to God, hey, he went out, he could close the door, but he closed the door to my sin, he closed the door, Jesus, to my guilt, he closed the door to my shame, he closed the door to my unforgiveness, he closed the door to my past, hallelujah, but on that early Sunday morning, he got up and he opened up the door, hallelujah, and said, because I live, you can face your tomorrow, because as I live, all my fears are gone. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Yeah. Saints, we got an open door. An open door to everything you need in Jesus. So let's go ahead and take it. Let's go ahead and take our confessions. Praise the Lord. Say these words after me. I confess. I confess. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my shepherd. Is my shepherd. And I am his sheep. And I am his sheep. Number two, so I confess. I confess. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Is the great I am. Is the great I am. And he is. And he is. My door. My door. Number three, so I confess. I confess. That it's my door. That it's my door. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Has closed the door. Has closed the door. To my life. To my life. Which once. Which once. Was dominated. Was dominated. By sin. By sin. By guilt, by guilt, by fear, by fear, by pain, by pain, and by love. And by love. So I confess, I confess that as my door, that as my door, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has opened, has opened the door, the door to a new way of living. To a new way of living. This new way of living, this new way of living involves, involves daily fellowship, daily fellowship with Jesus, with Jesus and loving service, and loving service to others. To others. Let's take our prayer commitment. Ready? Let's pray. Father, Father in, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus I, I thank you that, that Jesus Christ is my shepherd and I am his sheep. I, I thank you that, that Jesus Christ is the great, great I, am. I am. He is my door. I thank you that he closes the door to my life, which was dominated by sin, guilt, fear, pain, and loss. But now he has opened the door to a new way of living. New, New way, way of living involves daily fellowship, fellowship with, with Jesus and loving service to us. As, as I, I realize this by faith, faith, I understand that I will experience a grace for an open door, door in 2024. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Is everyone here today? And uh, you've never given your life to Jesus, accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you're here today and you did that and, and you say, you know what, Pastor, I just need to rededicate my life back to the Lord today. Or maybe you say, Pastor, you know what, I need a church family because I want Jesus to be the door to my life. What better day to say, Jesus, be my door than a resurrection Sunday, 2024. So you can receive Jesus today as your door. And all those things. He can be a believer, a belonger, and a becomer. Why? Because Jesus is the door. Again, thank God for baptism. Thank God for Lord's Supper. Thank God for church attendance. Thank God for you being a good person, trying to do good things. Thank God for your religious background. Oh, yeah. It has to be praised. And people can do all that and still never make Jesus their door. They depend on self ethics on about them. It's not about you. It's about what Jesus has done. But you got to open up that door. And listen, you watch this broadcast right now, and you've never opened up the door to, to let Jesus be your door. You can ask him, say, Jesus, come into my life today. I admit that I'm a sinner. I deserve to die in my sins. I, I also believe, Jesus, that uh, you took my place at the cross. 
And now because you are the one who has been given me, I now repent all of my sin. And now Jesus, be the Lord of my life. My friends, you can do that right now today on Resurrection Sunday, 2024. Allow Jesus to be your Lord. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. A lot of people believe in Jesus, but he's not that door. Yeah, I'm not a bad person. I didn't say you were. But still, Jesus is not your door. And you ask yourself, is he your door? And if he's not, what are you going to do about it? He says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Why? Because I'm meek and learning hard if I let you so. But my yoke is easy, my brother. Thank you, sister. If you make that decision, there's a phone number you can call on the screen. Call that number today. And someone will get back in contact with you and say, Jesus, we're here to help you to be your Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to you. And we just love you. We pray for you. We pray that Jesus will be your door. That's my prayer. Everyone listen to my voice. This is broadcast. My prayer is that Jesus will be your door. That's it. Well, I need money and I need, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But you need Jesus to be your door first. <laughs> well, I need healing and I pay. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But he's going to be your door first. And with him comes all those other things. Why? Because you can't come to the Father except through Jesus as the door. You cannot get out of this room unless and go to another room unless I go through a door. You can't do it. You can't do it. You'll stay stuck. You'll stay immobilized. And we'll be having the same conversation next year, five years, and ten years. And I'll say, when you let Jesus be your door, man? In Jesus' name. But listen, I pray the word of God is blessed you so much. But we're going to continue on worshiping the Lord. Uh, this is our time that we come in fellowship with Jesus through Holy Communion. And we want you to go and get your bread and get your, and get your cup. Fellowship with Jesus is being the door. And all he's the door, he also just shift that he wants to lead you. See, his job is to feed and lead. Your job is to follow and swallow. How's that? He's your door. And the Bible says, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after he had given thanks, he blessed him. He said, Thank you. This is my body, which is broken for you. He says, Often oh, you do this to the remembrance of me. And like that, he took the cup and didn't give it to him. He said, This is the New Testament in my blood. See, what do you remember about Jesus? What is about Jesus he wants us to remember? He wants to remember that he is the door, that he closes things in your life for your better. And he wants to close those things, but he also he wants to open up to new things. That's what you want to remember about Jesus. And when people come to try to open up a door that Jesus wants to close, I say, no, you can't do that. Mm -mm, keep closing that door. So stop bringing up my past. Stop bringing up my hurts. Stop bringing up my, my loss, my fears. Jesus wants to close this door. And I can't allow you to continue to open them up because it's not helping me, it's hurting me. And Jesus will anything be open that's going to hurt his sheep. Nothing at all. Thank the Lord Jesus. And so you've got your bread and you've got your cup. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's a blessing for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This bread represents our healing. And Jesus took those stripes upon him as he went from judgment hall to judgment hall brutally. I mean, his body was just made. He did it for us because of love. And those stripes were for our healing. And the Bible says that by his stripes, we are healed. And so in remembrance of Jesus, because he is the door to our healing, everything we need. We can memorize this because as often as we do, it's remembering him. So let us eat for our healing.
In Jesus' name, amen. And now the cup, the shedding of blood, the forgiveness of all of our sin, past tense, present tense, and future tense. So we close the door to an to a old life and open the door to a new life in Jesus because of his blood. Let us now drink. Body, blood of our Lord Jesus in remembrance of him being our door. Thank you, my friend. Are you just taking the communion, that bread, that juice? And once you see Jesus is a door, close some things, but also, also open up a new door of abundant living that you've never experienced before. And that's why our motto here is how faith. We didn't simply say it's faith. A new door. Grace for an open door in 2024. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, we're going to continue on worshiping the Lord and thank you again for your obedience and holy communion. Praise the Lord. It is now an opportunity for prosperity. Woo! If you need an offering of the Lord, raise your hand. We'll give you one of those. So listen, uh, we have an opportunity to give because Jesus is our door. We thank him for things that have been closed. We thank you for things that have been opened in our life in the name of Jesus. And so we have an offer. I'm going to get one of those. If this is you watch this broadcast and you want to participate, and say, yeah, I want Jesus to be my door. Well, listen, you can help participate in what we're doing through giving, uh, House of Faith through giving. And the way how do we give? We give several ways. The more we give through text giving, you can download the app on, on your phone through the House of Faith Christian Center, find that out, and then go ahead and give through text giving, put in the numbers there, and there'll be a blessing to you. Also, you can give through online giving, which is one of the most popular ways of giving. And you go to our website, House of Faith Christian Center .org, and uh, then just follow the directions. Uh, and find where it says donate, and then you can just give as God has blessed you and praise the Lord. Use your credit card, use your debit card, and just really let it be a blessing to you. Third way that you can give also, uh, you can give, and you want to give through checks, or you can give through money orders. You can write a check, make it out to House of Faith Christian Center. Uh, our address is Post Office Box 985, Smyrna, Tennessee, zip code 37167, and you can give. Or if you want to give through Cash App and give through Ronnie Simmons Ministries, you can use a dollar sign, RDS Ministries as well. But listen, for however you give, I want you to remember this. It said, the seed that leaves your hand and never leaves the earth. And you are sowing good seed on good ground. Whether the Lord needs our money and all, the Lord needs our money. But we do need the Lord over the doors for us. I tell you right now, because I don't want to be stuck. I don't want to be immobilized. I don't want to be not going anywhere. I want doors to be open. Praise the Lord. And he has a brand new life for you to live through open doors. And so I said, God, now I'm trying to get you to do something. God, I'm thanking you for what you've already done. You will open the doors in the name of Jesus. So, listen, you got an envelope. Also, praise the Lord. Uh, this is also uh, our Mission International Mission Day. And that we give to our, our missions over in the Congo. Uh, praise the Lord. We sow seeds over there as well. And uh, we got good fruit over there going in the name of Jesus. And so uh, we got a lot of things going on in giving on Resurrection Day. And we're just so thankful. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin and love and crimson stain. But guess what? Jesus, he washed it white as snow. In Jesus' name. So let's hold up our offerings right now. Father, we want to thank you and praise you, Father God, for the gift that you've uh, given unto us, which is this being Jesus being an open door. And now, Father, we just share the blessings of God upon us. Thank you, Father God, for your love you have for us. And Father God, we thank you. You speak the hearts of your people to your people. Speak the heart. Show them that your son Jesus is the door. And how you close some things, you open some things for them. And Father, we thank you, Father God, for all those participating, our members, our friends. Father God, uh, those who watch this broadcast through Facebook Live, Father God, even our own sons and daughters, our family members, that Father, we are sowing in the good things that you're doing here at House of Faith. We honor you, we thank you, Father, and we proclaim Jesus is alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So let's just give God that blessed us. And we want to thank you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Thank you again for your beatings. And uh, whew, I just love to give. I love to give the Lord's money. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because he is my door. Now I want to tell you, praise the Lord. We're going to teach you and show you that when Jesus is your door and, and you be obedient, what Jesus tells you to do, you start seeing that door be open wider and wider and wider.
praise the Lord. Why? Because God is for this thing. And we praise the Lord. Well, listen, hey, we've had an awesome time. Facebook Live, we want to thank you. Say a resurrection day for you in 2024. And we'll love you and praise God. You have an awesome day and, and this day. And, and, and God will just pour blessings upon you in an awesome way in the name of Jesus. So again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. At House of Faith Christian Center, we have a threefold vision. That is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. At House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. There are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. At House of Faith Christian Center, we are ministers of excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center, and I wanted to leave you these familiar words. Remember that Jesus is Lord and continue to show compassion in your action. We'll see you next time. God bless you and have a great day in Jesus. Happy Resurrection Day. Bye-bye.